the search continues for the worst action figure line based on a movie, and this time it takes us to the stage of the Professional Arm Wrestling Association. Let's go to Over the Top! Welcome back to the Chuck Room, everybody. It's me, the Chuck Man, coming back at you with a whole new video. It's Tuesday, so what does that mean? Our search continues for the worst action figure line based on a movie. Now, when I started this series, I said we're only going to look at good movies. And this one here, you might have to debate me, because I don't think it's a good movie, but I asked a lot of you guys out there, and a lot of you did like the movie. Although, maybe it's good in a bad way. And we're going to talk about the arm wrestling classic, Over the Top. Now, if you think it's a bad movie... You might be right, because I agree with you. But I still added this to the list, because a lot of you out there told me you did enjoy the movie. So let's see if the action figures for Over the Top is the worst action figures made for a movie. The world has always bet against Lincoln Hawks. This guy's nothing. Why'd you leave us? It won't happen again. What my grandson found, I don't care how you do it, do it. But a winner never listens to the odds. <laughs> Whatever happens, I want you to stay with him. What Rounders did for poker, this movie tried to do for professional arm wrestling. Something most of us didn't even know was a thing in 1987, and still not even really sure of today. The movie was released by Canon Films, famous for releasing movies so bad that they're good, like Masters of the Universe, and a bunch, and I mean a bunch, of Charles Bronson movies in the late 80s. The movie stars Sylvester Stallone as Lincoln Hawk, a truck driver by day and a professional arm wrestler by night. He must decide what is really important to him when his estranged son comes along on the road with him. To help promote the film, Canon Films and Warner Brothers Pictures turned to Luco Toys, who were the maker of... I don't know. I couldn't find any other action figures or toys this company even made. <sighs> Looks like this was a one-strike-you're-out toy company. I'm sure they made other things. I just couldn't find anything, at least action figure-wise. Now before we get started, let's look at how we're going to rank this action figure line. We're going to go back to episode 1, and a younger junk man is going to tell you all about it. I'm sure if you watch this series every week, you're tired of seeing this part of the video, so just jump, so just jump ahead a few frames. First up, we're going to look at the look of the action figure. Does the action figure look like what we see in the movie? Do they dress the same? Does it look like the actors that the film's based on? Then I'm going to look at the play value. Are these figures worth playing with as a kid? Would kids enjoy playing with something like this, even if maybe they don't look like what they do in the movie? Then I'm going to rate the marketing. Did the toy company time it right? Did they release the action figures way too early to where the time the movie came out no one cared? Or did they release the action figures way too late where kids just moved on and didn't care either way? And then I'm going to rate packaging. To sell kids on action figures, you got to catch their eye, and the packaging does that. Look at the vintage Star Wars action figure cards. Your eyes are going to connect with the package and it's going to call kids to pick up the action figure, look at it, and decide if they want it. And last, I'm going to rank the quality. Do these figures hold up? Sure, we can all buy an action figure and stand it up somewhere and it will last for a couple years. But does it stand up to kids throwing them off dressers and against the wall? Thank you, young junk man. That's how we're going to rank these figures. So let's start off with number one, the look. Do these look like what you see in the movie? Well, let's see. Let's look at Sylvester Stallone as Lincoln Hulk first. The face really looks good. I was kind of shocked to see the face look like Stallone. They even look more like him than those Demolition Man figures. But the bad part is the body. Maybe it's due to the arm wrestling feature, but the elbow joints make them look really bad. And the body for most of the figures are just the same. The overall look of the figures look like cheap plastic. A lot of the other characters don't look like anyone from the film, and you're not even sure who they are. So, on the look of these action figures, let's rank it out of a 5-star ranking. The look of the action figures gets a 3 out of 5. Now that we got the look out of the way, let's look at play value. Sure, a koi line could look bad, but are they fun to play with? Would kids, would kids enjoy playing with these figures? Let's take a look at that. First, let's look at the accessories that came with each figure. Well, there's none to look at. That's right, all you get was the figure. No extras accessories for them to play with. There was a play feature here as a little knob on the back of the figure. Turning the knob has them arm wrestling with other figures. 
At first I thought this was a great little addition and different, but after doing research, I found the figures really didn't lock their hands well when they arm wrestled each other. Maybe if they put a little magnet or something in the hands to have them locked together, it would have been better. The pin on the back is not the best idea either. If you're turning the little pig and your friend is turning his, it's mostly just a fight of who's going to lose grip of the small pin first. Maybe a pump button would have been better or something else entirely. As I said, there's no accessories with this figure. If you bought just one figure and took it home, it wasn't fun at all. What could you do with it besides just have it walk around and flex its muscles? You couldn't arm wrestle anyone with it, and with no accessories, you couldn't even put anything in its hand. Now, they did sell an accessory. That's right, they sold the table. Just a table. This has to be the only action figure line I can think of that sells a table. Not a table part of a playset. Nope, just the table. I get the fun of it. I understand why they sold it. But it would have been better if maybe it came part of a arm wrestling stadium playset. Now, the company did release a figure 2 pack that came along with the table also. This was a much better plan. The 2 pack action figure is the only one that has any real play value. So out of the 5 star ranking, what are we going to give the play value? This might be the lowest figure of any play value we've done. Out of 5 stars, it gets a 2. I mean, it's really bad unless you buy that 2 pack. Again, if you're buying just one figure, it's not fun at all. But now let's look at something a little easier to get right, the packaging. Does it catch kids' eyes walking down the aisle at the toy store? If they see this, will they want it and beg their parents for it? Well, let's see how they did with packaging. Well, the card is very good. It has the title right there on it, big and bold. And it lets you know it's a movie starring Sylvester Stallone. You can clearly see the figure in the bubble. However, there's no real information about the figure you're getting. There's no picture of the character from the film, or even a picture of the figure. The figure's name looks like it's been printed on a piece of paper and then glued to the bottom of the bubble. One good thing about the card, right on the front it shows you how they can arm wrestle each other. Again, this is a good feature to really grab kids' attention. That is until they played with it and saw how bad it sucked. But it does good at catching your eye, making you want to have two figures wrestle each other. And I guess in a way, it makes you beg for two figures instead of one. The cards are all the same. The front and the back are the same no matter the figure. On the back of the card is a good photo of all the figures. This is something I love to see. It lets kids know who to buy in the line. A lot of toy lines today don't even have this. You can also clearly see that this is a canon film starring Sylvester Stallone. I mean, it tells you twice at the top of the card. One thing odd about this card, and it's printed on the front and the back, it lets you, or maybe your parents, know that this is endorsed by the National Arm Wrestling Association. I mean, really, when it comes to buying action figures, do you really care if it's endorsed by the National Arm Wrestling Association? Did you even know there was such a thing? You think if this wasn't on the label, someone would have turned down buying the action figure because it wasn't endorsed by the National Arm Wrestling Association? Is that weird, or is it just me? Now let's rank the packaging out of the 5 star ranking. We're going to give Over the Top's packaging a 2 out of 5. This line's just not getting anything right. But, as I've said before, the one thing companies get right most of the time, and is the easiest to get right, is the marketing. Again, let me stress this again. A high ranking here has different value than a high ranking in something like play value of the look. Because this is so easy to get right, it's almost impossible to mess up. So let's look at how the company did with the marketing of the over-the-top action figures. Well, the film was released in February 1987, but the figures started hitting stores in 1986. Why so early? Well, mostly they started to hit in December, when the movie was already being promoted. It's most likely the company wanted to cash in on the holiday season and pick up some extra sales. I can't really fault them for that here. It's a smart idea to get some sales and help kids know about the film before it gets released. The downfall is, these figures look so bad, they were hitting clearance racks before the release of the film. And unlike most of the figures we looked at so far, I could find no commercial for this line. It seemed the company's budget to promote the action figure line was zero. Maybe they knew the movie was going to tank at the box office. For its opening weekend, it got beat out by Mannequin. That's right, Mannequin. So maybe the company thought, hey, let's release these at Christmas, make as much money as we can before anyone sees the movie, and then just take our losses. However, I think they jumped the gun releasing them a little too early. So out of the five-star ranking system, how are we going to rank the marketing of the over-the-top action figure line? We're going to be nice and give it a three out of five. 
This could easily have gotten a ranking less than three, but they were smart enough to, hey, help promote the film by getting out there in the Christmas season when there was a lot more people at the toy stores. But with no commercial or nothing to actually promote the line, they failed at marketing, something so easy to get right. Now I said, if they get a five here, the value doesn't hold the same. But if they get it low, if they get a one, two, or three on something so easy to get right, that means a lot. So we looked at the marketing. Now let's look at the quality. Do these figures hold up? I mean, they're arm wrestling figures after all. Kids are going to have them fight and arm wrestle and probably thrown around the room. Do they hold up or will they break? Well, let's just take a look at them. Look at them yourself. What do you think? I've seen countless of these over the years with missing arms. It looks like kids that only had one tried to arm wrestle with them themselves and broke the arm off. Also over time, the arm at the elbow seems to get really loose. And not just the wrestling arm, the other arm has this problem also. They will hold up with some hard play, but will break very easy being thrown around. Like those Mission Impossible action figures we reviewed a couple of episodes back, these are made out of cheap, light plastic. Doesn't take much to make them crack. So let's look at the ranking for the quality of the action figure. Out of the 5 star ranking, we're going to give the quality 2 out of 5 stars. This company is really doing bad at almost everything that's so easy to get right. But let's look at the overall review. Let's see overall how these action figures are and give it a final score. So is this the worst action figure line based on a movie? Well, it very well could be. The look isn't all that bad, especially when it comes to the likeness of Stallone. But the line really comes off as a cheap knockoff dollar store toy. The play value is nothing here if you only have one figure. The figure should have at least a came with some training accessories or something to make them a little bit more fun. Also missing from this line, the kid from the movie. Sure, he might not can arm wrestle, but he was a key part of the movie. Why no figure of him? The package itself isn't all that bad. It does catch the eye and really sells you on the gimmick of the arm wrestling. The market had hardly none other than an early release around Christmas time to pick up extra sales, but there was no commercial campaign and nothing else to really push the line. I can't really blame them for that. I guess they knew the movie wouldn't do that well. But we are talking about a Stallone movie at the peak of his career. As for the quality, it's pretty bad over time. They get really loose at the elbows and not just the wrestling arm. I could understand if it was the wrestling part of the arm and not both arms. The only thing that's really good about this line is the two-pack action figure with the table. So let's rank the over-the-top action figure line. Its final score out of five star gets a one star. One star. We haven't gave any toy line a one star yet, but this company got everything so wrong. The look looks cheap. The figures have no play value if you buy just one of them. The marketing here is all off and very little promotion for it. The packaging is the only thing that's kind of okay at best. And the quality here don't really hold up over time. This might be the worst action figure line we reviewed so far. We might have found it if we hadn't already. Or who knows, maybe it's next week. Well, I want to thank you for watching. We're only two episodes away in our search for the worst action figure line based on a movie. But don't worry, after those two episodes, we're going to do a recap show, go over the figures again, and tell you about some that didn't make the list. And then I'm going to ask you out there to vote on this line. And then we're going to come back with the results of that line and give you the winner of the worst action figure line based on a movie. Until the search continues next Tuesday, Thumbs up this video, subscribe to the channel, let me know in the comments below what you thought about over the top of the action figure line, and we'll see you again very soon. Thank you, sir, for that unsolicited testimony.